Welcome to CAS 133 Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dells, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt instructor, and this is the video for week four. Now, let's walk our way through this week and then we'll look at the book and what's involved there. You're going to have your objectives again, you're going to have if you get stuck, and because you did Word last week, there'll be less Word resources this week. However, you can always go back to last week and use some of those resources if you find the need for it, if you're stuck on something. Then you have the direction video that we're watching right now. And then you're going to have a conversation in your forum, and it's going to be about how to multitask with your machine and when you think it's going to be most useful and how you can, lose, how you can use that skill. So, there's a video for you to watch if you're using a PC. There's a video for you to watch if you're using a Mac. And remember, if you're interested in the other operating system, or you're going to have a Mac at home and a PC at work, or vice versa, you are always welcome to look at all the materials. There's never a problem with that. And then you just choose which way you want to respond. You have your data files, and again, you're going to need to download those, pull those to your desktop or to your flash drive, and make sure that you take the files out of those. So if I was going to do that, and I was using a browser other than Chrome, I would right-click, and I would go Save Link As. When that comes up, I'm going to find where I want it to go, and in my case, the desktop will work just fine and I'm going to tell it to go ahead and put it on the desktop. Now if you're using someone else's machine, you're up at the college, you're going to want to make sure those get on your flash drive. Just a hint, when the college machines turn off, everything that's on them is erased. So make sure before you do a log off, shut down, um, that you are very, very, very sure you've got everything on your flash drive or you've emailed it to you as yourself as an attachment or something so you don't end up with losing your work. I'm going to make my screen just a little bit smaller for my window so you saw how I grabbed the edge of it. Then I can grab this folder and drag it over and drop it. And of course it didn't go where I asked it to so that means I'm going to have to dig down and figure out where it did go. Then I can make a chapter 2 folder. I'm not with that spelling, my hand hit the edge, so we'll try that again. And then I can open this zip file, open the next part of it, and I can grab whatever it is that I am going to need out of here. Maybe I need these computer notes. So I just grab them and I pull them to that other folder. Now if I need a bunch of things, that folder is going to be important. If I needed just that one file, then it's not a huge deal to just pull one file out. So we'll make this a little bit bigger again, since you're now reviewed and are sure how to get those files downloaded. You'll be submitting your Word research paper that we'll be looking at here in a second. And of course, you have a version form. And then you have your application project. Again, this format's going to be like last week. So if you didn't quite get it or you struggled a bit last week, go back to last week and kind of watch the information about the application project, reread the PDF, application project directions, whatever it is you need to make sure you're understanding what you need to be doing. Then you have your journal, which is your 321 reflection. We did it last week. We'll do it most weeks from here on out. And you're going to click edit my submission when you get to the page and start your journal. Now I would type it in Word first personally, but that's kind of your, your choice. You need at least 150 words or more, and you're going to be answering three basic questions, three themes, or things you learned in the unit, two ways you plan to use what you've learned, or you think you will use what you've learned, and one idea that you would teach someone else if you had the opportunity to teach it. What is the important takeaway that you think somebody else would love to know if you could tell, have the chance to tell them? You do not actually have to go out and teach it. You just have to write about it. And then you will have your form that is on multitasking. And you're going to have a 100-word post and then a 50-word or more reply on both. 
Again, you can upload last week's extra credit in the link above still in week three's link. It'll be good until this Saturday. Or you can choose to do week four extra credit and upload it in this link. Either way, you need to get it done within one week of when we complete the book chapter if you're going to do extra credit. And then you have your weekly task list at the bottom. That will, whoops, I went too far. That will help you with your checklist. So hopefully that will kind of get you through week four for the basics here. So let's switch over and look at what the book shows us. So we are in Word Chapter 2, creating a research paper with references and sources. And sometimes students hear the word research paper, and before they read the directions, they go out, they pick their favorite topic, and they start researching for a research paper. Nope, not happening in this class. This is something totally different. You're learning the mechanics of how to use Office for that putting together of a research paper so that you can present it with the correct formatting, the correct footnoting, the correct inline sourcing, all of those mechanical things. And sadly, a lot of times students will tell me, well, I had to write a paper for a social studies class or a psych class or my English class, and nobody told me how to source it. I didn't know what MLA meant. You'll have that chance to learn here. You are actually not researching a single thing. You're going to use a preset up paper for you. All you have to do is basically copy it and format it correctly. First thing to know. So as you head in, it gives you reference information. And some of this is going to be the most important part you read because as you're telling me that you don't have any idea what MLA is when some teacher says, oh, do an MLA format or APA, and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. And you're trying to kind of limp your way through. Well, now, this talks about Modern Language Association of America and the American Psychological Association, APA and MLA. So it tells you about that a little bit, and that's good information to know as a student or anybody that has to do research, which is not just students by the way, time people get jobs. So now we're going to look at this research paper a little bit. And autofocus doesn't seem to want to really get excited about this. It might be just a little too high for it to autofocus on. Uh, that's a little better. Okay, so you have some things to notice. This paper has double spacing here. It has a title centered. It has indenting. It does not have a big gap here. It's going to ask you to suppress the space after paragraphs. Students often miss that direction, and they have this like huge gap there. So that's points off. As you go through here, let's see if I can slide this up a little bit without crisis happening. You will no notice an inline source has been put here. These are live action sources, which means that when I have it electronically and I click on it, it does something. It's not just typed words like it looks like on this page. Um, it is actually a live source, and you format it in a proper way by following the directions so that when I s click on it, I get the right results. So make sure you follow those directions carefully. Sometimes students just think, oh, I'll just sit down and type this. It'll save me a whole lot of time if I just type this, and I don't have to go through all those steps and directions. And they fail the project because as soon as I click on that, I know they haven't followed the directions, and then everything goes downhill after that. The whole reason to do this project is to learn the tools in Word that are built in that will make putting that paper together when you finally do a real one a breeze. And if you're just going to copy this to like, okay, I'm going to make her happy, I'll get my grade and life goes on, you miss the whole purpose of the project. Therefore, you fail. Down here, there's a footnote. There's a special way of putting those in, and when I click on it, I'll be able to see that you've done it the right way. Down at the very, very bottom, which I don't know if I can get to with the camera. Here we go. You will see how the footnote's been set up. They've changed the fonts. They've set it up, or at least the font size. This is, again, going to be a not, another one of those live type of um, citations that I can click on. You continue up to the next page. Again, a live one. 
Now, at this point, you think, oh, I've got it made. Well, no, they're going to have you go back in and change some synonyms and change some words. And so you're going to have to go through that last step that has you change all the words. And then it's going to bring you to just a couple of clicks of your mouse, and this is going to magically appear. You don't have to go out on the Internet and look at one of those sites that lets you do references and copy it in. Basically, you're going to do just a couple of mouse clicks, and it's going to be there. Then you're going to do a little editing, a little turning it into plain text. You're going to take a word out or add a word in. You're going to do a little bit of editing to it, and you're going to be through the directions eventually. You need to be very careful you follow the directions step by step, because for every one of those steps, I can see if you've done it correctly or not. So let's walk through the textbook textbook a little bit. It's going to have you change some document settings to get started, creating it, getting it going. Let's go back out, see if I can take the camera up a little bit so we get a little bit more to look at on a page. So it's going to get you all set up, get ready to go. And then it's going to start walking you through directions. I'm kind of doing every other page because you're going to do it from your book. But it's kind of walking you through all the steps of directions, so you'll see that they're just page after page of steps. Add space before paragraph, remove space after paragraph. Don't miss that direction right in here, because that's a loss of points. You're going to update styles to match. You're going to just kind of continue through using headers and footers, and you need to use them correctly. It's a pretty simple thing to do, if you read the directions and a skill that's often used so it's a good one to know so you're going to again continue on you're going to type some of the stuff oh and sometimes students will say well should I use this or should I like change it to CAS 133